नमस्ते एंड वेलकम टू दिस एक्साइटिंग एपिसोड ऑफ सकॉलॉजी डी बैंकिंग मिथोलॉजी सकॉलॉजी मीन्स साइंस और ट्रूथ स्टडी ऑफ ट्रूथ अपोजिट ऑफ दैट इज मिथोलॉजी व्हिच मीन्स साइंस और स्टडी ऑफ फेक लाइफ इमेजिनेशन मोस्ट ऑफ द अब्राहमिक फेथ्स हैव सीवियरली अटैक्ड अदर नेटिव रिलीजंस एंड कल्चर्स इन द नेम ऑफ मोनोथिज्म आई हैव नो आईडिया फ्रॉम वेयर दे गेट देयर courage to attack others on monotheism monotheism is a word which has destroyed the native cultures and religions of communities across the world and it's become a symbol of pride for these faiths mostly abrahamism faiths because they have continuously attacked all cultures south america north america mostly this monotheism word came from theological superior mindset of the european churches beginning with catholicism and later on islamism took over and the peop- people whom they converted through force all these abrahamism faiths converted through force and through severe government persecution of minorities and most of the people were converted from these ancient faiths which believed in the omnipotent or omniscient god present everywhere in the hearts of everyone and also the principal figure from whom these powers came from so every single ancient faith believes in one creator with multiple powers dedicated or delegated to multiple figures the divine mother devata we call them devi and also bhagwan ishwar these are all the different words used ishwar is a word used for the omnipotent omniscient omnipresent god and bhagwan is a personality and there are different devata dev the latin word devs come from dev are the people who are responsible for managing the world affairs there is no conflict with an intelligent mind if you are thinking in intelligent way there is no conflict over there but these conflicts were created so that somebody can be easily persecuted it gave a tool in the hands of their armies to persecute these native cultures and native religions and we are seeing seeing that even today whether it's uh, america maybe they may not there is not so much violence again in the america on the religious ground especially on the basis of monotheism but still persecution exists in regular talks in regular conversations i am monotheistic religion doesn't mean anything so one god universally the entire humanity says god is one and that essential principle comes from veda it says ishwara parama krishna and this is the vedic conclusion but there are so many fights so many human rights violations happen even under the under the guidance of united nations is united nations has been failed to protect these religious minorities and today i'm going to take you to one such culture and religion called yazidi culture and religion for simple english grammatical correction i am not going to use the word ism with as the culture if the word ism has to be used then can be used for christianism islamism and judaism also but i am not going to use the word ism for yazidi it is one of the ancient native cultures of five countries syria iraq Iran Turkey Georgia and Armenia is six actually widespread big region 
of this culture? What do they believe in? And what do they think? In fact, one of the most humane culture on the, on the, in that region. And it connects to the pre-Zoroastrian pre culture of Iran. Zoroastrians were intrinsically connected to India, Hindus. So this is the remnant, you can say, of the culture of Veda or Sanatana Dharma. And this culture remained, is still there, still being practiced and also flourishing despite all attacks by terrorists, severe, severe human rights violations against them in the name of just monotheism. That word, single word, is a root cause of religious terrorism. And by going to this history, I am going to highlight you, please go and read for yourself also, the religious persecution against Yazidi people. Now we will understand who they are and where they are from. Many of them are in the United States and in many other parts of the world, fleeing the religious persecution in the name of monotheism. Hold your seats. Before I get into that, I will show you the region first, so that you have some idea. So this is the region we are talking about. I am going to make my screen bigger, so you can see it in full scale. So we are looking at six countries, parts of Iran, Iraq, northern Iraq, Turkey, Georgia, this entire region. My cursor you can see. And there are many places here. I have only captured 18 places. But there are more than 18 places of the temple still existing. Some are being, being built new. And I congratulate Armenia for protecting these people. And I have several questions on Turkey and Iraq who are not able to provide protection to these people under various names from their own majority population. Let's begin. So, let's go to their religion first. I'll keep the region in the screen. So, I'm going to touch upon some basic facts of the religion. They also call themselves Sharfadin. Sharfadin, and sometimes because of fear of persecution, they call themselves monotheism, monotheistic religion. But I would say that they need not be fear now, and they should talk themselves about who they are. Now, the world recognizes they are Indo Aryan tradition, which is Hindu which is Sanatan Dharma, but names are different. So, principal belief, according to them, is, now if you look at their uh, one god, sometimes they believe in Shved, Shvedavind, Ezdan, Petcha. And according to these names, they have Kul. Kul, is the word they use and they in their scriptures they have 1001 names or 3003 names according to Kyuls which is very similar to Vishnu Sahasranam. Earth, air, water, fire and ether are the five elements which are sacred to them and they need not be polluted very similar to Hindus mentioned in the Veda because earth is very important, you live on it. These are the elements also form part of Sankhya. Actually, in Veda, in Bhagavad Gita is mentioned it. Bhumi Rapa Nano Vayu Kham Mano Buddhi Revacha Man Buddhi Ankar. 
मन बुद्धि अहंकार थ्री एलिमेंट विच मेक दी अदर फाइव एलिमेंट वर्क सो दिस इज एट एलिमेंट बट फाइव आर मटीरियल एलिमेंट एंड मोस्ट ऑफ दस दी दे वर्शिप दी सन जनरली and if you look at their symbols are mostly made around sun now if you look at the overall population of yasdi people they are approximately 1 to 1.5 million people or more because many of them hide themselves and the world began with emptiness mahatva and and there was a white dar means white dar brahmanda in sanskrit and and from his own pure light was created and then the seven beings were created brahmand and who are often called divine beings and and the leader of the seven angels which is satrishi were tavusi melak a peacock angel now seven sages we know and kashyap is one of them the most biggest is also called prajapati and the uh, and the creation then it created the human beings also so they also believe in triad and the uh, one which is all pervading and remains aloof from everything else is the person who is like vishnu he is melak taus and and he is is the one not melak taus he is the one who is is providing energy to everyone else and then from first person to come is melak taus who is a ruler of the world like brahma and the second one is is shekadi and third is sultan azit creator maintainer and destroyer and the first who is remote and inactive or just supervises or ishwar these are three triad they have very similar and uh, sometimes the islamism and christianism followers call this uh, melak taus as evil or satan classical strategy of the monotheism based religions call somebody satan so that they can be easily persecuted the symbol is the sun because from sun most of the ancient cultures of the world including hindus we worship sun many parts of the earth sun is worshiped as a principal eye of god in the sky and the persecution of the yazidis was done through calling by calling them satan or devil worshipers christianism called them devil and islamism call them kafir like they call hindus also as kafir everywhere else is the same thing now the holy figures of of yazidi are the uh, adani who is a uh, katani adani katani samsani and other figures are there around total of 365 holy figures are there which have been narrated by yazidi and many of the yazidi tribes are based on these holy persons and the many temples and shrines built in their honors uh sometimes babchak shudan shas and these are different names very similar to 33 types of devta like one for every day very similar the heptad sometimes they call them heptad 
Now, coming to the list of their places and the places where they are being worshipped, and the rebirth of the soul is a very common concept. The change of garment to describe the process. Vasam se jina ni yatha vihaya, straight from Bhagavad Gita. And change of one's shirt. They call it kiras gorin. Similar transmigration of soul. Body goes from one soul to another, just like you change your garments. Bhagavad Gita, you can literally see Bhagavad Gita being implemented here or in their culture. Names can be very different. They also believe in cyclical time, which is Veda, based, based on cyclical time, Satyuk, Tretai, Dhaparyu, Kalyu. And the time sphere, Enzel, is a time before the creation of this world. There is God and a pearl in this stage, Mahatattva. So, first of all, Mahatattva is created in Sanskrit and Vishnu enters it and then energizes the creation process. Then Brahma is born. Deor or Bedil is a cyclical course of time which is change, changing, turning, evolution. And the linear course which is on the human level which is eschatological and, and the the storms or the catastrophes, Tufan, which is uh, pralay, sometimes pralay happens, there is a partial pralay and full pralay, maha pralay or pralay, very common to Vedic culture. And the temples entrances, I am going to show you all the temple entrances, which are very similar to a Hindu temple. So now I do not know why Indian government or somebody from the Hindus have not tried to go there, include them and give them diplomatic protection is needed with them. And their cosmology is also very developed. State before the pearl, which is very Vedic Mahatattva, after cosmogony, and the creation of the earth and man. Hmm? And the generally in Keole, Tavisi Melek, Yarabi Ji Enzel Dehar Tui Kedimi. Ishwar, you are infinite. And Dua Razne is As Dei Me Ji Direke Enzeli Me. I am from Angel, I am coming from that Angel. Many prayers are very similar to Vedic prayers. Words can be different, but the meanings are the same. And this is what makes it very bona fide and a very respected religion, minority religion, which all the people, it is the responsibility of everyone to protect it. The ESDQs responsible, they, they call that the universe originated from a white pearl, like Mahathafai said, and there is a hidden unseen person who is managing it. And, and this person from the cosmic world comes out, he rested on the horns of a bull that stood on the back of a fish. And the universe burnt out and visit, came out and visible as waves rippled across from pearl to from, from cosmic ocean. So there is a concept of bull and the fish. Bull is a symbol of dharma and fish is a symbol of matse incarnation also of Vishnu. And the colors are also there and some colors are important, some colors are not important just like in the Hindu culture very similar and the, the accounts of creation is differs from Judaism, Christianism and Islamism but it is very similar to Vedic culture, Sanatana Dharma culture, very similar and, and is, that is the difference between Sanatana Dharma culture and also the Abrahamism cultures also. 
So, yes, the cosmology is very close to Hindu culture and Zoroastrian, Zoroastrian culture. And there are many literatures are there Kumanji, Kul, Dirozge, Sadetia, then Tergin, Pistperde, Kisede, Ksama, Lal, Kirobo, Shimenok, Paizok, Robarin. Very poetic. And the all these holy books are claimed to be the book of information and some they call it black book which is I don't think so is the right name for it. So Kale Beit which is oral literature, religious hymns and also the word Kavali comes from here, Yazidi culture. Okay which is a yes the original culture not an Islamic name that is. Mishur is a manuscript written in the 13th century for each lineage. So Kurds are also many Kurdish tribes also follow Yazdi but most of them have been converted. And the 40 years of Pir, Pir is again an ancient Iranian word still used in common with the Yazdi culture. The Yazdi festival of Lalish is the start of the new year which is very common to Makar Sankranti. Makar Sankranti is falls in spring and uh, according to their own calendar. And also another festival is Feast of Ezel for divine figure Sultan Ezid or which comes in December and uh, the Yazdis fast on three days from sunrise to sunset it also falls under the Ekadashi very common to Ekadashi and and the the third is Tausgaran Tausgaran festival and uh, these are sages visit many places their own saintly people and then there is a Sindhya Semaya which is annual pilgrimage to the tomb of Sheikh Adi in Lalish which is in northern Iraq. And then there is another one called Tiwaf, a yearly feast for different shrines. So prayers are very important, prayers dedicated to God and holy beings, prayers of ESD castes, prayers for specific occasions, rite of passage prayers prayers against health problems, illnesses, different kinds of prayers are there. And the 40 men temple on the top of the Sinjar mountain in northern Iraq and, uh, and it is very old temple. How did it come to that name? We don't know. But we can see some things from the Mahabharata era actually. Mahabharata era mentions the Queen Madri coming from this region. And uh, and which is very common. I will show you some pictures actually. But before that, let me take you through the maps. It is very important to understand this area with maps. It is easy to understand as well. So, let us begin. So, this is, let us start the, the tour. Okay. So, let us start with this. The most important temple they have is Sharfadin temple. And these are the pictures of this temple in Iraq. Many beautiful places. The temples are made just like Hindu temples. Water bodies, directions, only the flags are missing. But flags are there and there is a bullhorn on the top symbol symbolizing Kalash. Okay, this is the ancient culture of this land. I am just surprised that 1.5 million have survived. This shows Sanatana Dharma cannot go anywhere. The second temple is tomb of Sheikh Ali, which is in a mountainous region, but you can see the temple here. Important, 
many important symbols are there in the temple. Probably sometime Shivling was also here. And you can see the markings on these temples, very elaborate and very typical to a Vedic Hindu temple. Sacred trees are inside the temple and sun sign is there on the top of the temple, which is the temple sign, which is this earlier times they had protected it, there were different symbols there and inside water pots for festivities, very colorful dresses and for people here to see these places at different times, people can sit there, meditate, very welcoming community. Unfortunately, when people are very welcoming, they are prosecuted in the name of religion. And the third one is in Nivesh, again in Iraq, this temple is existing, you can see, and many things are kept, they are far from the local cultures but protected because of the people, not because of the government, government has done very little to do any protection here. Then you have another temple which is Kekut Lalish, Clean Lalish, beautiful place. The local people are still celebrating or is still there. The next one is the temple in, where is this temple? Again, it's in, I think it's in, it's in Turkey. Let me beautiful temple. It's in I think it's a new temple being made here. Beautiful lawns. I mean the sun symbol and the peacock angel. Peacock. Peacock is also connected with Krishna. And uh, these symbols are eternity of time, which is swastika. And the sun symbol is everywhere. Then you have Goen, which is a outside Goen territory. This is a temple there too. Very small temple, ESD, rest next to the highway. There's not many pictures over there, but you can see the temple there. Then you have this temple, which is Temple Haji Ali Yazdi, is Hadi Al Yazidi, and which is also there, which is still existing, and uh, roadside near the highway. Most of this, what happened was the highways were made on top of these temples by the local authorities. So that's how the destruction happened. Hardly anyone quoted it. First time an American channel is covering it. Temple Chachem CSD we already showed before. Sarfadin Temple we already showed. One of the most sacred temple. Almost 800 years to 1000 years old. Or more than that before actually. And then you have Yazdi Shrine which is very famous. But how many are there we don't know. But beautiful shrine which is protected, still existing. Then you have the temple of Shekhadi. We already saw that before. I already covered that. So this is what their temples look like. Okay? And there are more things you can check out in the video. And I can send you the link of these different temples. If you are visiting these places, you should go and visit them and uh, and appreciate the culture. Don't try to teach them, don't try to change it. Just appreciate what ha they have and absorb spiritually what you can. Uh, 
these cultures, ancient cultures are way more spiritual than any of the Brahminism based faiths because they are built on experience, they are not built on belief. So they are much more wide, much more acceptable and, and all these things, which is much better than the religion based things which are, religions often create wars and the Brahminism war always mired in some supremacy. Judaism fighting with Christianism, with Islamism and, and, and definitely they attack everybody else too on their way so that they can get more followers. So what goes on everywhere, Hindus have seen it, native religions, indigenous people, native Americans have seen it, South Americans are seeing it, native Europeans have seen it, Sami people, Romani people, there are multiple examples all in the name of monotheism. Now, let me show you how do the people look like because it is important to see their festivals and their cultures, right? So, first of all, this is their symbol and uh, which is a symbol like sun which is there and shrines which is Mane Peshan, Mane Reshan, Ma Main Rachan destroyed by Isil in the Sinjar mountain and Isil has kidnapped 7,000 to 8,000 women and many of those atrocities which are hard, we really recorded extensively but nobody has taken action on it for various political reasons. Peacock angel which is Melek Taos in the center and he is the one, he is also the carrier of Murugan. So, there are many things associated with that uh, and the uh, Kuba Mera Diwane is the largest temples, it is in the Armenian village of Aknalich, it is dedicated to Melek Taos and the seven angels of Yazdi, Sapadishi. If you look at the symbols carefully, symbols denote all the cyclical aspects of time and the importance of the seven angels. Yes, the new year, Tawaf in the town of Bashika, Shekadi in Lalish, many places. And this is the, they purify, and there are women priests here. They purify a child with water, like in any Vedic Hindu ceremony. And the dresses are very colorful. Some kind of glimpse of the life. Uh, so, this is what the culture in the temple is about it. So, there is a lot of similarities we can see between Yazdi and Sanatan Dharma and we should appreciate that and try to incorporate that uh, in our foreign policy. In the United States State Department, I will say, the State Department must, if they want to see this video and build a protection for these people coming from Iraq, uh, Iran, Israel and uh, Syria, Armenia and Turkey and there is a lot of good karma involved in if you do that, a lot of goodwill also involved and a human America has always stood for human rights, this is a fantastic opportunity to stand for human rights and do something good for these people. And sometimes geopolitics, you know, we can, we all the nations want supremacy over the resources. But you know, who is the final laughter? We all have finite time on this earth. We come from earth, we go into earth. So, so considering that something, sometimes humanity takes precedence over geopolitics. I would urge the Indian government and the, and Russian government and American government to all collaborate to protect these native cultures, indigenous cultures, which is a great heritage of humanity and protect them, protecting them will also get us good karma in the end. So thank you all for listening to me, it's a short video, normally my videos are very long, it's a recorded video and so please do like, share, subscribe and let us know your feedback. Namaste and thank you.